thank you for having me today. Um, I am Dr. Stokozile Swanda. Uh, I work for the Department of Veterinary Services in the Division of Veterinary Technical Services. I'm going to present today on uh, basic fish diseases, the basic diseases that f affect fish. Diseases in fish are not desirable uh, due to the fact that they affect adversely productivity and production on, in aquaculture and also in wild capture fisheries. There are some diseases of fish which actually affect both subsectors, the wild capture fisheries and fish that are grown on the farm, which are aquaculture. Uh, diseases of fish, they actually do affect the growth rate and the feed conversion ratio of the fish, thereby uh, leading to loss in terms of uh, 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 the fact that the fish will have low appetite when they are sick and then there is wastage of feed during that time. And uh, the diseased fish are actually easily caught by birds and also by the predators. Diseased fish are affected also by, more affected by poor water quality and also they have lowered immune response uh, when they are suffering from uh, vari uh, different types of diseases, which I'm going to talk about later. <laughs> Maybe just uh, as a starting point, uh, what does a healthy fish look like? Maybe to elaborate on that, a healthy fish will be swimming freely in the water, in our case in Zimbabwe, mainly in fresh water. Uh, we, we, we practice freshwater fisheries. So if you find fish are rubbing themselves, then there's something wrong. There could be some diseases, external parasites, for instance. Uh, <coughs> the fish, uh, uh, healthy fish, will also have very normal color, bright skin. Scales are flat and firm. The gills, the fish gills, are a very indicative organ of the health of fish. The fish gills will be red and covered with just a little mucus. That's how a health fish should look like. The eyes of fish should be transparent and slightly popping out. And the fish should have a normal fishy smell. And also the fish should not maybe have external parasites, cysts or wounds on the skin. Uh, fish have got a way of protecting themselves uh, from diseases. And one of the main response of fish when they protect themselves from diseases, which is the first line of defense, is production of mucus or slime. And then also the scales and the skin, they also act as a very effective barrier against pathogens and parasites. And fish also react to, infla uh, to, to, to infection through inflammation. In inflammation. inflammation is a response whereby we sometimes get swelling, reddening of the skin, sometimes loss of function of an organ or even the skin itself. And fish also have a, a way of producing antibodies into their blood uh, to fight the specific pathogens that would have invaded the fish. It is also important to notice that uh, in fish health, unlike in, uh, which is aquatic health, Unlike in uh, terrestrial animals, the aquatic environment, which is a very, very major uh, pathway of disease path, uh, transmission, uh, is, uh, is very important. It's an important, important component of the environment of fish. And then for a disease to occur, there has to be the pathogen, there has to be the environment, there has to be the host, which is the, the, the susceptible fish species itself. And then the interaction between these three components will m sometimes produce the disease, especially if the fish is susceptible to the particular pathogen. Uh, in fish health, there is a, 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 a biosecurity which is very, very key and crucial. If not addressed on aquaculture farms, it can lead to losses 
and introduction of, of, of diseases into the fish farm. What is biosecurity? Biosecurity is uh, the practices, procedures, policies applied to prevent introduction and spread of infectious diseases. Uh, we are going to talk about infectious diseases later and also uh, the spread of aquatic invasive species. The purpose of biosecurity is basically to reduce disease introduction, minimize the spread on farm, in fact between ponds and also to other uh, nearby areas which are in production of, of fish. Biosecurity also promotes fish health and protects economic investment, which is very key in production and uh, in production of fish as a, a protein, uh, which actually impacts very, if uh, biosecurity is not in place, this can have an impact even at national level, at regional level, thereby reducing the income that a farmer can get or that the nation can get. Uh, and also the biosecurity can also be uh, pro used to protect human health itself. <coughs> the risk factors for disease introduction are basically, uh, it is important to identify the, the disease entry point. How does the, the disease come into the establishment or into the fish farm? So you need to be careful about the fish movement, the incoming live aquatic products, uh, the fish eggs, the fingerlings themselves. And the water source is also very key as, a, as an entry point. If the water, say, contains pathogens that can spread very easily, especially in the aquatic environment. And also we have to be careful about uh, equipment and vehicles coming into the establishment and uh, the vectors, which can be animals and humans in the form of formites. The purpose of biosecurity, I think, as I've said, is uh, basically to reduce the disease introduction and uh, also protecting uh, the health of the fish and also uh, uh, the health of humans. Okay, there are several biosecurity measures that are, uh, are required to be in place for fish farming to be carried out uh, as a way of, m say, increasing our food security, nutrition security, and also income, uh, and to contribute effectively to livestock development. Uh, there's need for quarantine of any farm that is recording disease outbreaks, and there's also need to to lime the water as a way of preventing pathogens. And also it's important to stock, if possible, with disease, uh, certified disease-free fish from reputable suppliers of fish fingerlings, for instance. And also it's important to limit movement of live fish into sites for on growing. Uh, it is important to train staff on how to hygienically uh, handle fish and also how to, how, how to control uh, the, 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 the fish diseases as well. It is important also to avoid purchasing fish or other products for further processing into a processing fa a, a plant uh, where there is fish production around. There is also need to use uh, s water supplies that are treated, for instance, bowl water can be treated, spring, spring water, or UV or ozone treated water. Uh, the fish holding facility should have independent water supply uh, through flow of water into tanks, ponds is actually uh, discouraged. Aquatic animal movements is, uh, we have spoken about that. We will need to, uh, to actually use certified disease free fish stocks and also isolate new stock before introduction to the current inventory which is already on the farm. 
There's need to limit animal movements from one epidemiological unit uh, to production areas. And water source also needs to be established and tested. The water should be tested and if possible, UV treated. And also as a biosecurity measure on farm, there is need to construct food baths for people moving in and out of the fish farm. There is need for wheel baths. All those are measures that can, that can be put in place to, to implement the biosecurity. And maybe over and above that, there is also need to, to have a farm level biosecurity plan for each farm. Maybe coming back to the diseases themselves, uh, there are basically three categories of fish diseases which are very key. Uh, the first, first category is the infectious diseases. These are caused by bacteria, can be caused by bacteria, which are bacterial diseases, viral disease, diseases, fungal diseases, and parasitic diseases. And the parasitic diseases can attach you can attach on fish skin, on fins, gills, and even into in internal organs themselves. Parasitic diseases, these include protozoa, nematodes, cystodes, and other helminths. Uh, the stocking densities in fish have to be regulated, as this may lead to, to, to fast spread of disease thereby causing high mortality in fish. The second category of fish diseases is nutritional diseases. Uh, nutritional diseases can be caused by too much or too little nutrients available in the fish feeds or available to the fish themselves. If feed contains, say, excess, fish, uh, excess fat, the fish can suffer obesity they can suffer liver failure and even kidney failure. And then they can also suffer suffocation if the fat is deposited on the gills. Fish diets uh, deficient in vitamins and minerals will lead to reduced growth rates, corroded gills, skin problems, and other body structural abnormalities. Therefore, fish feeds need to be balanced and well, well preserved, uh, well stored. Fish should not feed on expired or moist feed as this may lead to a disease called aflatoxicosis. Then the third category of fish diseases are diseases that are due to the environment, changes in the fish environment. These are basically poor water quality management due to poor water quality man management. And fish mortality may occur due to also suffocation if there is low dissolved oxygen in the water. And this usually aff affects fish early morning hours or at night. Therefore, for this reason, adequate aeration of the ponds must be ensured. Juvenile fish may also suffer what is called bub bubble illness, where there is a rapid uh, change of water quality, maybe for instance due to rapid current. Fish may be stressed due to handling and unhygienic conditions on the farm. Uh, this usually shows the skin lesions, excessive production of mucus. When the mucus is produced excessively, this can be a sign that fish are stressed. And also the mucus can accumulate on the skin and the gills. Fish may be poisoned by harmful chemicals in water, such as pesticides, oil, sewage and heavy metals. Uh, here maybe talk about examples of uh, bacterial diseases. These are just examples. 
We have streptococcal diseases, diseases that are caused by streptococcus, different strains of streptococcus. And then there's flavobacterium, also called flexibacterium. There is vibriosis, another example, aeromonas, uh, mainly aeromonas hydrophila, and then pseudomonas can also be a problem in fish. Ways of, pre of preventing fish diseases, there are many ways of preventing fish diseases. The main one being good hygiene and hanging practices. It is important to clean and disinfect ponds regularly, um, maybe using a salt solution at 3%. Fish can be kept uh, uh, to avoid overstocking. It is important to avoid overstocking. Uh, this can also prevent diseases. And also different size groups and sexes of fish need to, to, to be separated as this may lead to fighting and then diseases uh, emanating from trauma can, can be noticed in the fish. Uh, fish must be handled properly during sorting, grading, harvesting, and by using appropriate fishing equipment, the nets. If a disease outbreak occurs, there's need to quickly remove the dead fish as quickly as possible. And it is also important to report any suspect diseases to the relevant authorities, which is DVS, Parks and Wildlife Authority, and maybe also to University of Zimbabwe. Other ways also of preventing fish diseases is mainly managing the water quality to make sure that there are no pollutants in the water. Uh, other parameters that are supposed to be monitored in the water are dissolved oxygen, which I have spoken about earlier, pH, temperature. There is need to optimize all these parameters. And also including the ammonia compounds, which can actually cause toxicity in fish. There is need also to manage the feed itself and to balance the, the, the phytoplankton and algae in the ponds. It is important to ensure fish feed supply is as a reliable and spoiled feeds should not be used in aquaculture. Environmental diseases, uh, environmental management, it is important to keep pond environment healthy and clean Ensure your ponds are not invaded by wild fish, birds, and snails. Uh, special screens or, or nets should be used for this purpose. It, uh, th th there's a need also to regularly disinfect all farm equipment and protective clothing with the recommended disinfectants. Uh, I'll just go through a few uh, examples of, d of recommended uh, uh, disinfectants, one of which is uh, uh, benzalkonium, benzalkonium, benzalkonium chloride. Uh, the, the, the disinfectants should be used as per manufacturer's instructions and to ensure the, 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 the instructions are, are followed and uh, the expiry dates are observed and also other other examples are iodine compounds they can also be used in disinfecting equipment nets and and everything that is used in an aquaculture establishment vacon can also be used hydrochlorium uh, sodium hypochlorite can also be used chlorine can be used by it, but a lot of care has to be taken because of its corrosive nature to a lot of products that can be uh, on the farm. Okay, there's, there's cause of concern in hanging fish, which can actually cause uh, a, an, an impact in human health if fish is not adequately cooked and it carries these pathogens that I've been talking about. This may lead to zoonotic uh, diseases which are diseases that affect animals, in this case fish, 
and also human health. Now, I think uh, all being said and done, uh, I think it is important for fish farmers to be vigilant when they, uh, there is a lot of aquaculture production that is currently ongoing and uh, there, there is need for fish farmers to be aware that fish also suffer from diseases just as much as uh, the terrestrial animals do. And it is important to report any outbreak of disease or unusual mortality in fish to the relevant authorities so that uh, the appropriate actions are taken to address these problems as some of these diseases can actually spread widely. An example of which I can give is the episodic ulcerative syndrome which is quite highly infectious and can spread uh, to a wide uh, area and even across borders if they are a, a regional you know, shared water, water sheds and water bodies. So there can be that negative uh, impact in terms of uh, fish dying from episodic ulcerative syndrome. This disease can affect both uh, fish in aquaculture uh, and fish also in wild capture fisheries. Uh, although I think it is uh, uh, good to maybe mention that uh, uh, the, the mostly grown fish in Zimbabwe, which is Nile tilapia or Oreochromis nailoticus, is so far resistant uh, in terms of uh, episodic ulcerative syndrome. <laughs>